Welcome to the weekend edition of Simply Bitcoin. We break down the news from Twitter, the daily fails, meme reviews, and software releases. And the websites by plebs when we got them. Drop us a like, subscribe. You know where we're going. It's number time. All right, at the time of this recording, the block height is 681,542, the Bitcoin price 56,870 chain rewrite days, 686 total lightning capacity, 1,234.60. Okay, I'm going to be a geek and just be like, look, total lightning capacity, one, two, three, four. Pretty cool. <laughs> Okay, anyways, uh, Bitcoin versus gold market cap, 9.21. You can see it doesn't take much to impress me. Um, sats per dollar, 1,758. We still have not seen that all-time high again, but it's coming. Anyways. Do, 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 yeah. do you guys remember him? Oh, yeah, we got this this rubber chicken. We got this rubber chicken. This but he doesn't, he doesn't cluck until price of Bitcoin reaches an all-time high, which was 20 years ago. So yeah. hopefully he appears. In a coma. Fucking chickens in a coma. Man. Dude, this is boring as bro. We're chant I don't get gone. it. What's going on, dude? It's like it just doesn't want to leave. It goes down, it doesn't want to go. It just wants to keep going to 50. It goes it's, above, it keeps going to 50. Why? 58k, not okay. 58k, not okay. <laughs> We're bored. Bitcoin, do something. Uh do something. Poke. <laughs> poke uh anyways phil it's time for the daily fail okay I, i'm gonna i'm gonna preface this by saying i i have never seen a weekend of so many fails um to date so that that tells me that we are we are about to enter the real thick part of the bull run because in one weekend alone okay we had some guy pretending that nfts was gonna save the environment with ethereum <laughs> Anyways, that guy ended up deleting his tweet. He was gone. <laughs> Just gone. So we were going to show him. Um, but then but then it got even more interesting, right? We have Bill Maher, okay? And we also had Charlie Munger come out. So obviously, I can't show both of them, all right? So we're, we're going to shift Charlie to another day um, and, and use that another day. But for today, let's take a look at Bill Maher and let's see why he's going to have fun staying poor. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure he has a blue check mark. Yeah, he does. There it is. All right. So here we go. Okay. See, <laughs> confirmed. All right. Let's do this. So this is today, but we're going to do a little trip to the past because Bill Maher, he's been wrong quite a bit. And finally, new rule, nothing with crypto in the title ever turns out good. <laughs> there is a mania rising in the country these days about cryptocurrency and how the train is leaving the station, so you better get on. Tesla has jumped in with both feet, and Microsoft accepts it for software now. Etsy, Etsy accepts it now, and so does PayPal and Can't Starbucks and Whole Foods and Home Depot. One in 10 Americans used their stimulus checks to invest in one of thousands of cryptocurrencies in existence, Bitcoin being the most famous, but there's also Ethereum, Binance, Tether, even one called Cumrocket. <laughs> There's also one called Dogecoin that someone started as a joke, but... Oh, and you can hear all the shitcoin bag holders in the crowd. <laughs> as far Fucking as I can tell, it's exactly the same as all the other cryptocurrencies, because the, the whole thing is a joke. Okay, guys, look, this thing is eight minutes long. I'm not going to drag it out. The link's going to be in the show notes for you to watch it. But let's take a little... You know, this this is what I this is what I love about people that really just, you know, they don't know shit, but they're willing to give a very strong opinion about how much they don't know shit. So, let's go back in time and thank you Nico for pulling up this for getting me this fantastic link. All right, we're going to go way back to 2003 and let's see what Bill's take is on technology then. Care that your phone takes pictures. <laughs> It's a phone, not a Swiss Army knife. Great, now the annoying camera buff and the annoying cell phone prick can merge as one guy. <laughs> hey, if you could... These people don't know shit, okay? And they speak well, and they have a huge audience, and people for whatever reason. It's interesting, right? Like an individual could be smart, but once you get into a group, a group of people will be stupid. 
And, and that's exactly what happens, right? You got large groups of people listening to these people like Bill Maher, okay? And actually taking their advice. He was dead wrong about cell phones. If you, for whatever reason, listened to Bill Maher's stupidity about phones, you missed out. You know, you, you missed out on one of the biggest tech revolutions after the internet. The smartphone changed everything, okay? I was one of those people just like him. Okay, when I was using my old Nokia 87 or 9755, I don't even remember what it was. There was the game of Snake on it, right? Like, I used to sit there and I was like, this is never going to allow me to browse the internet. I am never going to be able to do anything but play these simple games. And it's because the way that we work is that people, you know, if you asked people in the, you know, before cars what they wanted, they would have told you they wanted faster horses. They would have never told you that they wanted a car. And Bill Maher is the perfect example of that short-sightedness. So, yeah, he's, you know, uh, don't get me wrong. All of those other things were shit coins, but, you know, Bitcoin is legit. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, he gave a stage to Ethereum and Doge and uh, Cum Rocket, uh, you know, like that's, those are all shit coins. Let's be honest. Dude, Phil, you're absolutely right. And, you know, it, it's 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 unfortunate, dude. Bill Maher is a paid propagandist. OK, he, yeah, he gets paid, you know, tens of millions of dollars every year to read off a script. Right. Mm -hmm. And he obviously does it really well. Look how convincing he is. Um, mm -hmm. But I feel bad for any sucker that believes this dude because he doesn't ca man. He doesn't care. He shows up and he reads his thing and he gets paid for it like he has nothing to lose. Other than not buying Bitcoin, of course, you have everything to lose if you listen to some idiot like that. And look, the video, the, the cell phone video is a perfect example of that. This guy's been talking bullshit for decades now, right? Like, I can't even think of all the other things he probably just said that were completely false. You know, it's just but it's like it just goes to show, dude, how early we are. You know, if he's yeah. willing to group these, well, if he's willing to group Bitcoin with all those other shit coins, like. He doesn't understand, dude. He doesn't get it. Um, and saying that it's just, you know, uh, it, it, saying that it's just, it, it's just, it's useless as whatever. It just goes to show that he lives in a Western country, lives, in, he, he has the privilege of, of living in a country with a, uh, of a fairly stable financial system, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Where the money isn't deteriorating by the second, visibly. It is, but it's but just it, ever no, visibly, so slow. <laughs> visibly, right? Like you can still you can still get paid on a Friday night and go buy groceries on Sunday and the money hasn't evaporated. Yeah. Right? Well, it depends because if you're buying lumber, that's a different story. <laughs> yes, that's true. Don't be if you're buying lumber, you better buy it now. <laughs> yeah, you have to buy that now. You have to stack the lumber, bro. But stack uh, the lumber. But yeah, man. Oh man. And the blue check mark. Twitter was kind enough to warn us. Yep. You know, like this is propaganda. This is uh, this is fake <laughs> Trump. This guy's fake. a piece of shit. Here's the blue check. Fake news. <laughs> you have fake news. <laughs> but yeah, Don't man. Wrong. It, there are very few blue check accounts which are legit. But they're so few, and the ones that, uh, and I've seen ones, like, the majority of them so far, I haven't seen, I, I think I've only seen one that was legit. Yeah, it's, oh, <laughs> Literally man. one account. Uh, do we give Bill Maher have fun staying poor? Phil, why don't you do the honors? Bill Maher is going to have fun staying poor. <laughs> yes. Uh, all right, Phil, it's time for it. The Daily Meme Review. All right, everybody. The meme for today is brought to us by a plebe. Fellow plebe, let's check it out. It's brought to us by at Gigglesma. At Gigglesma. Uh, awesome. We definitely reviewed his memes before. Awesome name. Hard to pronounce, though. Okay, let's check it out. Look, a dinosaur. Jessica, it's called <laughs> the stock investor. <laughs> That's Charlie Munger. Dude, excellent. <laughs> Amazing meme, dude. Amazing meme. And because it's an amazing meme, I'm going to give it a much bigger X-Wing than yesterday. Holy crap. It's a full-sized X-Wing Lego. Yeah, that's what I'm <laughs> going to give it. What about you, Phil? Dude, that thing is nuts. Okay, so this meme was totally hilarious. Um, I actually watched that that conversation with uh, Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger. That, that was so cringe. Um, because he totally admits that he hates Bitcoin because it enables freedom, <laughs> which is like, it, it's the scariest thing to hear somebody say something like that. You know, like I hate this because it, it, you know, creates a level playing field and we can't have that. Um, anyways, that meme is going to get the faceplate of a coin acceptor. 
Oof. And, and see, look, please insert token here. Dude. There's only one token to insert, and it can't be inserted. <laughs> <laughs> it's the corn. It's the corn. It's amazing, the corn. amazing, amazing scores for an amazing meme. Yeah. That being said, Phil, it's time for The Daily News, sponsored by Crypto Cloaks. All right, everybody. So the news for today, check out this awesome tweet by Documenting Bitcoin. Definitely follow him. He's the best Twitter account documenting Bitcoin. Anyways, check it out. That's Phil's joke, by the way. Uh, this map shows concentration of reachable Bitcoin nodes found in countries around the world. There's 10,000 nodes protecting the network. Super bullish, but check out Adam Beck's response or Adam Beck's response to this. 10,000 reachable nodes, maybe 100,000 inferable yeah. by heuristics. Not all reachable due to NAT config. Plus, Blockstream yeah. Bitcoin satellite nodes are completely dark slash invisible. Super awesome. Super cool. And this is this is this is why no other no other network or no other cryptocurrency even comes close to Bitcoin. It's it's not even okay. Anyways, moving on. Uh Phil, this kind of defeats more of the shitcoin narrative, right? Uh this Adam Adam Back's tweet running side swap, a new liquid Bitcoin liquid only wallet with easy Bitcoin interoperable Vera it blah 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 blah. Uh, integrated peg in peg out. Thank you, Phil. Yes. And here's a swap. I think it's actually trustless based atomic swap, a uh, partially signed elements transaction analog of PSBTs with confidential extensions, right? So look, the reason I, I wanted to kind of show this to everybody was, look, you don't need a different blockchain to build your shitcoin. Use the Bitcoin blockchain. It is the st strongest one. Why would you use something inferior it doesn't make sense, right? And clearly, this is an example that you can build on the Bitcoin blockchain. Mm -hmm. That's a great example of that, right? So it just defeats the bit the, the shitcoin narratives. Why are you going to have a separate blockchain that's inferior? Why not build? I know why, because you want to sell your fucking shitcoin, right? Why build on something that's inferior versus building on the strongest one? You saw that with Microsoft. They chose to build a second layer on Bitcoin and not on Ethereum, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I suspect this is going to keep accelerating. I, I suspect, you know, the storage need uh, uh, narrative, which is like, oh, this is file coin, those shit coins. It's like, oh, we need a different. No, you don't. Bitcoin has that as well. You could, uh, they, they just announced it on, on no BS where it's like, there's a, there's a, there's a storage layer that's being experimented with. So Phil, it just goes to show, dude, you don't need a separate blockchain. You don't need a shitcoin. You could just build on the Bitcoin blockchain and benefit from its security. Anyways, Phil. Yeah, man. I, you know, I, I really don't know much about Liquid. Um, I, I've done a little bit of research on it. Um, and I understand the, you know, like the 10,000 foot view. I, you know, to me, it just seems like, you know, we've said in the past, right? You know, shitcoins are move fast and break things. Okay. Um, and that really doesn't work when it comes to people's wealth and value. Um, so that's why Ethereum is a, you know, that's why Ethereum is a circus. Whereas when you're building on the sound money base of Bitcoin, you know, this is, you know, this is actually built to last. It's, it's built to work and, and it's, and it's built to provide that base layer of security. Okay. Like, so this is the, this is the big difference, right? This is the big difference between, you know, building something for society, whereas, you know, kind of building something in your own little private lab that can totally fall apart. Um, I think it was Aoi that said this on BTC kindergarten, right? But like Bitcoin is the internet and Ethereum is like, is the intranet, you know, it's like your own little intranet. And that is exactly what it is. And I know that it pains people to hear that stuff, but again, you know, we, we've said it a hundred times before, if the tech is valuable and it's worth it, it's simply just going to get built onto Bitcoin. That, that's really all there is to it. It doesn't make sense. It no, doesn't, it doesn't make sense it, to build on something happens. less inferior. It Unless you're trying to scam people. It, exactly. You're going to build on something. You're going to build on something inferior if, if the incentives align for you. And, and that's, and that's what it is. And that's what these people do. They think short term right? High time preference. This is good for me. But then what happens once you're a scammer, right? Like once you're a scammer, people don't really want to work with you anymore. Anyways, this is the beginning. I suspect that there's going to be a bunch of other shit built on Bitcoin and it's going to oh, yeah. defeat the purpose. 
you don't, there's no, it's like lightning and Bitcoin cash or B trash, right? There's no reason for you to exist anymore. Lightning does what you supposedly were going to do a whole lot better, right? So mm -hmm. it just defeats the narratives. That's what Bitcoin does. It's yeah. awesome. Uh, but check this out, Phil. Kind of bullish. Uh, Bitcoin mining difficulties is largest downward adjustment of the year. Yeah. <clears throat> Bitcoin's mining literally fell just 12.6%. All right, everybody, check this out. Bitcoin mining sees largest downward adjustment of the year. Bitcoin mining's difficulties just fell 12.6%. It's kind of huge. And it's the biggest one since November 3rd, 2020. And that downturn was 16%, right? But I say it's bullish because you know how the difficulty goes, right? It's to incentivize miners to come back right to and you know how it is the higher the hash rate theoretically the harder bitcoin is to attack and theoretically the higher the value proposition and we're going to connect it with this article bitcoin miners generated 1.7 billion dollars in revenue during what? april that is a lot of money just to be mining right and uh that number is good because again you know, this is this is the incentive, right? The incentive is so strong. It's one point seven billion dollars strong. So and with the difficulty adjustment, if you're a miner, theoretically, you should be getting 12 percent more revenue because the difficulty did go down. Right. Mm -hmm. So, man, it's just bullish. It's bullish overall. I, I feel like if you see that on the outside, and you're looking at like, that's not good. It's very good because this is the networking just chugging along like always. Uh, Phil, thoughts? Miners incentivized to keep mining Bitcoin, validating nodes that are all over the world are incentivized to keep validating the transactions to ensure that they're storing their value and that their value is in fact on the Bitcoin blockchain. I, you know, the, the incentives are just, it's true that the incentives are as perfect as they can be, you know, like that, that is absolutely amazing. You know, I, I, we couldn't, I, I don't think we could ask for a better situation right now, right? We, we, we've got, we've got, we, we've got the proof that it's worthwhile to mine it. We've got, you know, institutions really looking at it for the serious asset that it is. And again, I've said this a hundred times before, an asset that we fully do not comprehend. Okay. So all we're seeing is a tiny little piece of it. And, you know, we've got some big players coming in and really taking a look at it seriously. And all this does is validate that uh, we were right. <laughs> <laughs> we were right. <laughs> right. Oh, my so God. There. Uh, I wish I wish I wore the I told you so sweater. OK, yeah. um, but check this out, Phil. More bullish news. I I want to I want to pull this up and I, I, I'm not going to pull it down to get your thoughts. And you'll see why in a second. Check this out. I think this is. This is this is kind of a victory, dude. The Bank of England and Parliament and look, someone put a Bitcoin okay. fixes this on the front of the of the Central Bank of England. What is this but not victory? I've had dreams of this before. Okay. okay? Uh Phil? But is this real? That's what I thought so that, too. Is this but is this real? Because I mean, if they actually projected it onto the building, do we have proof? Because unfortunately, there's a whole lot of people that make really good images. <laughs> so, Dude, I, I don't know. I do don't know. know. I don't know. But I mean, how hard could it be? It's just a projector. And you I just know, have to do it while no one's looking. It, yeah, I know. I You're know. Right? That, I that's know. the question. It's like, I know it's just a projector. But oh, they man. actually do it. Uh, apparently, they did it to Parliament, too. I hope right. so. Well, if somebody, you know what? If somebody's watching the show and they can verify and let us know, like, was this real? Because I'd really like it to be. <laughs> it was a it was definitely a historical moment if it was real right this is the biggest yeah. middle finger you could have right oh. if i was a central banker and i saw this my blood would be boiling because i couldn't do anything about it nope nothing uh, oh, amazing Except arrest amazing. try to arrest people right <sighs> yeah. you know? arrest people for projecting <laughs> you were projecting onto our building how could you <laughs> okay anyways uh the big news of today, Phil, is the Bitcoin taproot activation has begun. Miners mm -hmm. have now have three months to get on board. Right. It, it, this 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 part explains what's going on. Starting today, miners who wish to adopt the upgrade can signal their support by including special data in the blocks they mine called a signal bit. If 90 percent of the blocks mine during the difficulty period, um, then the upgrade is locked in for activation in November of this year. So how's that going? How's that speedy trial going? Not so good. 
not the speedy. It looks like uh, it looks like, like almost nobody cares. It looks like nobody cares, and the only <laughs> mining pool that does care is Slush Pool. So shout out, uh, shout out to Slush Pool for uh, essentially enabling or signaling that they they're they're up to the tap root, right? Uh, and this 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 awesome started, article though. I know this art. This awesome article by Vlad Costa kind of explains, right, why what the logic would be for these miners not to activate Taproot. To quote the article, at this point, it's likely that miners find more convenience in the larger size of multi-sig transactions and other types of on-chain contracts, uh, which Taproot reduces in size and therefore make uh, makes the chains more scalable, private, and affordable to use for complex transactions. By activating Taproot, the miners would willingly give up some fee subsidies for the sake of helping the network improve. Either this or they're taking the Sunday off and don't care much about signaling <laughs> Taproot. Right? Uh, ben the Carman also said that it could be a state a state actor kind of forcing uh, the, the mining pools to kind of comply because Taproot kind of, you know, ruins their chain analysis a little bit. So, you know, it could be anything, but, you know, no worries because if it doesn't get activated, uh, you know, when the speedy trial is over, then uh, Ben the Carman said that the that essentially what would happen is a user activated software fork to kind of, you know, bend the arm behind the back of the miners and uh, move forward with Taproot. Um, the user activated software, this actually has happened before back in 2017, back in the fork wars, the miners weren't playing fair either. So we also used uh, Bitcoin also use a user activated software to kind of, you know, improve the network that way. Uh, so it's just, it's very interesting. And this just goes to show how decentralized Bitcoin is, right, Phil? Because mm -hmm. as you can remember, <laughs> the, the Ethereum update, Vitalik just said something and all the miners were like, yeah, why not? You know, so here clearly you can see that the whole community is behind Taproot. We think it's a good idea. It doesn't matter though. At the end of the day, it's a decentralized network and yeah. every single individual miner or uh, mining pool, better said, has to make that decision. They have to make, okay, we're going to, you know, we're going to activate Taproot. Clearly, <laughs> as of right now, again, it's what you said, Phil. It's a little early. It's not going so well. Anyways, Phil? Yeah, I mean, I, I find these these kind of situations really, if nothing else, entertaining, you know, because it's kind of like a, it's like a soap opera in, in, in Bitcoin to, you know, to get these things to, you know, to get these things to, to go. Um, I'm really not surprised that as soon as, you know, we enabled the signaling that we have such low, you know, kind of like, a, a you know, I guess from the mining, from the mining pools, like low signaling um, support, but it's also the weekend um, and it's actually a really nice weekend. So I think people maybe are out, you know, maybe the, maybe the mining guys, they're just out, they're having fun. They're waiting till tomorrow, right? They're waiting for tomorrow. I, I'm not really worried though. I am. I'm, I'm really not worried. Uh, no, me neither. It, at the end of the day, it's, you know, like like Ben said, right? Uh, yeah. You know, it, if this doesn't work out, then a user activated soft fork is the way forward. But, you know, it's, it's just funny that the whole community was like, yeah, this is a great idea. And the miners like, eh, the weekend, yeah. it's... Uh, but uh, no, but all seriousness, if anything changes, right, in terms of if more miners do end up in that, that screen, you know, ends up looking more green than red, uh, we'll definitely cover it here first and we'll have yep. an update for you guys. But Phil, there was a software release today. Why don't you tell everybody about it? Software releases. All right, everyone. It looks like we've got Spectre, the DIY uh, hardware wallet version 1.5.3 that was released. And that is down below in the show notes. And it means I have to update mine. Awesome. Thank you, Phil. Yeah, me too. Um, but yeah, man, that was the weekend edition of Simply Bitcoin. If you enjoyed the show, don't forget to smash that like button. It's slow because it's the weekend. It's slow. Go. It's a slow motion. Uh, and of course, if you want to continue hearing the news from the Bitcoin blip, blip, perspective and the catastrophic fiat and shitcoin fails, definitely consider subscribing. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday and we will see you Tuesday for another episode of Simply Bitcoin. <laughs>